and I'm Cam, or Cameron Gordon, and I'm going to stand up here. Um, I'm on the Minneapolis City Council, uh, and I'm uh, actually uh, finishing my second term, running for my third. Um, and actually was unsuccessful prior to that, so it took me three tries to get elected, but now I've been able to hold the office. Before I was elected, there were actually two Greens on the council who didn't get reelected after their first term. So I'm, um, before I was elected to the council, I uh, had a career as a teacher, and I, uh, it's a real treat for me to get to do a PowerPoint, and so I'm just going to take some time to kind of tell you about my experiment, my real life experiment of seeing if I could uh, take the green theories and philosophy and actually get elected. And some people really like some lights that went out a second ago, and if we yeah, can we can't see it. I know, I know. I just want to. Talk yeah, about let's them. go for it. I should have said lights. Um, Alright, I'll try to speak That's into the mic. Uh, hopefully you, you can hear me well enough. So, this is kind of a little bit about my story of uh, trying to see if there isn't a green way to do things and a green way to, go to govern. First, I thought I'd let you see my world a little bit. Uh, it's, it's important to kind of have a, a distant view. So, I'm from Minneapolis, and right there where you, there's a Minnesota and Mississippi River converging. If anybody knows Minneapolis, they might even be able to see Lake Harriet, Lake Calhoun, Lake of the Isles, Lake Nokomis. A little chain of lakes there in the middle. So there's a bigger picture here. A lot of people live there. But when you zero in on Minneapolis, there are some of those bigger lakes there again. There are some numbers and some interesting facts. It's, it, there's about 380,000 people just in Minneapolis, not in the suburbs or the other cities there. Lots of other interesting um, facts are up there. Um, you can see how many uh, miles of alleys, things we have to look at, all those details. Um, there are uh, 13 wards. And there are 12 Democrat council members, and there's one Green council member. And that's my vote. So before I got elected, I just want everybody to know that um, I was really bold about what I was running on, and I told them that I was going to use our shared values, meaning all of theirs and mine, of social and economic justice, grassroots democracy, nonviolence, and ecological wisdom to lead me. And I've got some of the campaign literature here. I mean, just take a look at it and bring it back around. But I put that on almost every piece of literature, at least those, those pillars, everything I did. And I talked about it a lot. And I was bold-faced about it, and I actually got elected. It was close. I only won by 141 votes now, over the Democrat, though, who was uh, well-known and outspent me two to one. So they worked. Uh, when I re ran again in 2009, I pretty much told them the same thing. Uh, I might have fixed the words around it, but the core values are right in there, if you can see that. And I even talked a little bit more about, um, I probably did this the first time too, but about how we could live in harmony with nature and ourselves, a very green thing. And I was re-elected re the second time with 84% of the vote. <laughs> so if I told them I was going to uh, go in there and use these principles to guide me, that became the challenge. Well, how do you actually do that? Um, I certainly ran on them, especially the four pillars, and I talked about them a lot, and they were really important. So what I wanted to see is, well, can you actually use these to make a difference? Um, and I think that we could. There are some changes that we made uh, that I think relate to a lot of these. There's a list of them up there. You can see those, before I got elected, they weren't in place in Minneapolis. Now all of them are. Some of it's pretty obvious that maybe that ranked choice voting thing, that's instant runoff voting, uh, maybe that has to do with grassroots democracy. You can probably see ecological wisdom in there. Actually, the permeable driveways and the natural landscape, I'd like to say, are a little bit more about decentralization. It was actually people who wanted to do something in their yards and were getting in trouble by the city, and there was the sense of, well, that's their yard. Shouldn't they control their yard? And let's see if there's anything detrimental there, any you know repercussions for the rest of us or civil liberties that are going to be harmed or pollution. And there wasn't, so we were able to change that. Youth violence prevention was something I was able to work on, definitely nonviolence. Really the sweet spot though for me I think is this urban agriculture. And this grew up from homegrown in Minneapolis, but it turned out that by, uh, and when I was first elected, it was illegal to grow food to sell in the city of Minneapolis. Wow. Against the law, prohibited. Wow. There were zoning laws put in place in the 60s that basically said, commercial farming belongs out there, we're not doing it in here. 
It had been done in the city up until that point, you can imagine. But it was also hard for mini markets, farmers markets, other things going. So we ended up actually getting that. And if you think about it, that's community-based economics. If you think about it, that's social and economic justice. That's actually taking on the mega agribusinesses and saying, let's make sure the people who grow our food get fair compensation for it. And that's certainly ecological wisdom. Uh, and, and, and actually, in this case, it was a lot of grassroots democracy because the people were saying, we want to do this. Some of them already were doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really, that was really, that was really great. So something that I try to do is I try to uh, filter decisions um, through those. I set priorities with them. I actually group my priorities under some of those pillars and I tell people about it. Also think about them before I make decisions. And I'm just going to zap back to this slide for a minute. There's a big weird looking building in there. There's a big hotel in front of it. And it's got a green roof on it. And that's our, our basketball sports arena. That just popped up at a committee and we had to get a new roof. And what are we going to do our new roof? Staff said a white roof might be more environmentally you know, uh, um, helpful because it won't be so hot. And, and, well, and I said, well, what about a green roof? And actually it caught on on that committee and we were able to look, delay it, look at the price difference and get a green roof on there because I walked into each meeting thinking about ah, those na nagging pillars, what can I do about those? <laughs> so obviously they helped me figure out a lot what to do and why I want to do things, but then I started to think about they also helped me figure out how to do it because really I think that I, there's kind of a difference that Greens have. And, you, and, and we see this sometimes when we're having our own meetings, we're trying to be cooperative, seeking consensus, or taking a lot of time with things. We listen to people's concerns. We don't wanna, uh, you know, we sometimes alternate genders because we want everybody to be heard. And we're thinking about these things in our processes. But I have to tell you, when you're the only non-democrat elected to the council, there's a lot of pressure. Get in there and fight them. Uh, fight everything they're doing, you know. Uh, get them. Uh, you've got to stand up for us and take them all on. And, and it's like, well, is that really how to do it and how to really accomplish our goals? And so I, I want to share with you a little bit, and if there's a timekeeper, feel free to warn me and cut me off because I have trouble sometimes keeping in my limits. But um, I tried to look at some of these and I realized they really can help inform what we do and they also can really lead those others we serve with or we're with to also see why these work so well. A key one here is future focus. I think it really helps and I think you'll actually find a lot of people in the community and on your boards and commissions and city councils actually think being future focused makes a lot of sense. Let's think about what's going to happen 5, 10, 20, generations down the road with the decisions we're doing now. But you can't just take a little decision and say, I thought about what to do. It actually really helps to set it up, especially when you're in government, especially when I'm in government and city hall and I'm dealing with these 12 other people and a mayor and all these department heads and what we're doing. So I found a way to get stuff done is to first say, let's talk about goals and policies and let's work them into that and work them into our plans. You might not believe the plans that these government bodies do, um, lengthy, extensive plans. Um, every time a new council is elected in Minneapolis, there's a strategic planning goal setting session. Well, if you're there to just hammer, sneak in your goals in every topic and raise the issues, and get in there, it makes a big, big difference. I did put up a little bit here that I've just kind of stolen from um, other green parties about what this value actually means, and, and that's a little thing that I try to do. I just say it to myself in terms of me. What do I do with my actions? Am I looking to the future? Um, one of the things that's worked really well, too, is to set the goals really high, and there's some of the plans we we put some goal, we do, comprehensive plan, that's about land use, we've done a transportation plan. We just, we just updated our climate action plan, which was very significant and very important for a green to be involved in. We've also, since I've been elected, done a pedestrian master plan, a bicycle master plan, and so we try to infiltrate those with greens in terms of the community process, but also with our values and what we're doing. Also, I think it's important if you're gonna be future focused, to measure what you're doing and have your results. People kind of get that. And so as we're figuring out what we're going to measure, um, having our values present in there and look at it is, is very interesting. We actually did a tree canopy study. I just listed that as an example. The University of Minnesota helped us. So now we actually know where all the trees are in the city and how many there are. Of course, it changes dramatically all the time. But then we can set goals and we can look at where the pockets are and we can have neighborhoods get excited about, hey, I want to have a tree canopy like that part of town. Um, 
Also, grassroots democracy is really important. I mean, I, I think it's really important to be accessible. I think it's important to share my views. I'm amazed at how many council members really don't explain their reasonings, their rationales. I, was, I put a web blog out where I explain things and do things, and I actually had a big fight about getting to use city resources to create a blog that people could comment on, and it has to be, can't be connected to our city website. I mean, it was a challenge. It was a challenge, and I think a lot of it is listening. So I think over half the time, you should be listening to what people are saying and what they want to do. Um, it's also important to organize, and actually we've been able to create a lot. The urban agriculture, we created a food policy council. The city never had one. We've created a bicycle advisory uh, committee. The uh, city didn't have one when I got elected, and, and other things like that, so that we actually get more participatory democracy in there. But sometimes it's just important to kind of get out of the way. Say, all right, you want to have natural landscape, we're going to try to get out of your way so that grassroots democracy can, can reign and can do that. Um, a key for me also has been uh, figuring out how does respect for diversity apply? Um, you know, I think we think of biological diversity. We appreciate that. Makes the world what it is. We need that. So some, for some reason, we're willing to pretty, we can tolerate things like cockroaches and rats and squirrels, you know. I mean, they're invasive species in some areas, but we know there's got to be diversity. Mosquitoes have a role. Other things have a role to play in this. We welcome them. Well, somehow, uh, once we get to a government body and we sit down across the table from a bunch of people from another party, well, what does it mean to respect diversity then? And I think there's a key piece of that. Well, what about when then, when there's the, there's the NIMBY neighbor who doesn't want to do exactly what I think maybe they should be doing, how do you have the respect for diversity there? Well, actually, it turns out that it sometimes uh, helps if you can have some respect for diversity. Just be quiet a little bit, listen a little bit. Sometimes you get to a better result, but also sometimes you just are able to get a better partner. I actually set out when I first got elected, the first year I said, I'm going to find one thing that I want to do one of my 12 colleagues also wants to do, and I'm going to partner with them on it. And there are going to be different things, because I, I have a lot of different things I wanted to do. Some of them weren't the highest priority, but I thought, oh, we'll toughen up on, on rental landlords, because that's what I know the council president is interested in in her ward. So I went and did that. It worked pretty well, better with others. I could have done a better job probably with some of them, but I think it really helped me there. And they said, well, here's somebody that, that um, we can work with, and I think Greens could do that. Um, it would be great. And then I, uh, this Lincoln movie came out, and I'm not sure if this is really how he said the quote, but um, I read it, and it's something I put on a post-it note right on my computer in my office, and it says, do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? Nice. And I said, yeah, you kind of do. Now, what is a friend? How big of a friend? How close is a friend? You know, it's all you know, out there, but there's a certain way that you can, you can do that, and you can even be great friends, and we found ways, I found ways to be great allies with somebody on something that uh, sometimes, and it feels really good, who I'm mostly uh, out against. Now, this sometimes gets really hard with some issues. We had a big stadium uh, issue, and I think it's important that when there is opposition, that, you're, that I can be passionate about it, I can articulate it, and I can not be compromising about some things. And at the same time, I can say it's not that, you know, I hate you or that you're a bad person, but I certainly hate this public financing plan for the stadium, and I'm going to do everything I can to stop it. <laughs> we didn't stop it. So part of that maybe relates to nonviolence too. How can you have your passion and still be calm? People have accused me of being too nice of a guy, and so I, I work on that sometimes. I also I think <laughs> hired an aide who's willing to be a little more edgy and a little more negative and not quite wear the same color rose color, color glasses maybe that I do. But this is definitely a green value, and I think if we take it everywhere we go, we'll get a lot further, especially uh, even in our green meetings sometimes to remember. Um, and it's okay to be compassionate sometimes, even with somebody who wanted a billion dollars to the big uh, um, Viking stadium owner. You know, if, if something happens to them and their father dies or something, I mean, they're a person too, and they've got feelings, and, and there can be some compassion left there. Um, and sometimes you can use your position as an elected official also to pull somebody out of a conflict. Uh, this happens a lot maybe with more staff or community members. You can just say, okay, I see you two haven't figured out actually how to resolve this right now. I'm going to take it and think about it, especially on the council a little bit, uh, because when you're elected on the council, you're seen to have some kind of authority. I'm going to take this and work on it. You don't worry about it right now, and I'll see what I can do. And sometimes I barely work on it for like two weeks. But it turns out they're all calm now, and doing their other things and getting involved, mm -hmm. and they're going, somebody else is helping kind of carry this conflict and lifting it up and giving it some air. So that's good. And I also think that there's a, that, um, 
Feminism is a value that has to inform us. I think it's a trickier one because I happen to be a man here. But I think about power and how it is in the world. And I think about what I walked into in City Hall. And I have to tell you, it's a, it's a bizarre, dominant, top-down kind of structure where there's authority. I mean, that police chief is like that police chief. And in our city, there's only one person above the police chief, and it's the mayor. And so there's this whole line of command. And actually, as a council member, there's an easy trap you can get sucked into to take that on and say, okay, now I've got this power and I'm going to use this power and it's my power over people. But I think that we have to remember that that's not really the ideal, that's not the values that the Greens should be bringing to things. It's power with, maybe power to, maybe if it's power under. I'm not quite sure what all those terms mean, but they help me think about it in a different <laughs> way than power over. Because actually sometimes I'm just back there kind of rooting somebody from below saying, go with your power, you know, go do it, you know, and it really works, it really works, it, you let others lead. It also helps you win, because sometimes there's an idea that you have that you've worked a lot on, and you want to just say, hey, would you like to co-sponsor this? Why don't you introduce this to one of your colleagues? And you're letting them lead, you're kind of sharing the power, and the, and the, the secret is, you, if they're willing to do that, You've got their vote. And if you're the one green on there and you convince a Democrat to lead with it, well, that's going to look kind of normal and reasonable. And they're not going to be saying, oh, there's the, there's Tam out on the, with one of his crazy ideas out on the <laughs> left now pushing this. They're going to say, oh, look, there's another person doing it. So there's a, there's a strategy to that. Um, and sometimes I've had to learn just to wait. I've actually taken on some battles and lost them, and that was just fine, because I like to do that. And sometimes I like to have people's no votes or votes against what I want to do, yes. um, whether it's a yes or no, record it. And in the books, take yeah. the vote then. <laughs> Let everybody see where you stand, and then later we can bring it up to you. <laughs> but other times it's all right waiting a little bit. I, know, I remember the commercial recycling thing that I did. I was so patient and waited for those businesses to get on board, and I talked to them so many times, and we ended up having the Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce saying, we think this is a good idea. And the people who ran the IDS building and these other huge commercial buildings, it was going to be kind of hard for them to get all their recycling out. Partly, I think they want to look green because it's so popular now, but they went along with it too, and it was, a, uh, it was fantastic. Um, and I talked a little bit about decentralization, and I'm sure I've had 15 minutes, if not 20. How am I doing? 20 minutes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Well, anyway, this, this kind of covers a lot of other things too. It's just that you're willing to give up uh, and let somebody um, kind of have, have Trust them to make the right decisions and to have some input, and at least not be willing to go against them. Um, so even if there's something, we had something recently. Uh, it was a Save Dinky Town effort, and this is a. It was a pretty much of a NIMBY thing where they didn't want this dense apartment coming in. It was actually kind of nice transitory development, and I know that we want to grow density in the city because it's going to get people walking and biking and not living in the suburbs and all of this. But they weren't ready, and they uh, were very opposed. And it's like, well, that's kind of democracy, and if we're not there yet, it wasn't in my ward. If it had been in my ward, I think I would have done a lot more hand-holding, and let's see what we can do, and let's work together and seek consensus out of this before it gets to the council. But it didn't, and it was, uh, sometimes it's, it's kind of letting it go, uh, but, and, and a lot of times, the, there's such great ideas, small businesses, entrepreneurs, we didn't allow um, uh, brewing your own beer in Minneapolis either, and now we're allowing that. We didn't allow uh, food trucks. Now you can have food trucks in, in Minneapolis, and uh, we didn't allow pedicabs, and now you can have pedicabs. So a lot of it is just like, uh, and, and that's a lot of community-based economics right there too, and economic development. But it's like, um, let's try to do this and give people uh, a chance to do what they want to do and decentralize it, especially if, if, if it's good in those areas. There's some things that I'm working on right now that I haven't been able to get through there yet. We have a racial equity and employment plan. Just so you know, um, <coughs> Minneapolis has the uh, largest disparity in employment between white and, and African American, Native Americans. So the whites' uh, unemployment rate is way down there, maybe five, four percent. African American, Native Americans is up there, maybe sixteen, and, and this it fluctuates, but. Um, it's, it's consistently three times higher, and we still haven't figured it out. Also, I'm in the middle of a big battle right now, and I'm calling it a battle. I'll call it a fight, sorry. But with Excel Energy, which is our uh, uh, monopolized for-profit energy company, and I'm trying to say, let's monopolize. And even if we don't get there, even if we don't get there, having this big fight and letting everybody know why it might be a good idea and what a terrible partner they've been all this time and how they're pulling us all into, you know, uh, global yeah, disaster, <coughs> chaos, um, 
it will help well, even if we don't get to that municipalization because it's a big it's a big hurdle for the city our side but boulders actually leading the way a little and making it look possible but um so we're, we're kind of taking them on it's not done yet and I don't know uh, it's, it's a challenge to figure the future focus thing I mean it's it I can see a lot of flies there but I mean I'm not sure how, how it all does also moving to zero waste but these are things that are coming and hopefully I'll be reelected and I can do that so I think there is like a green way and I, I decided to try using that as one word because we have a lot of greenways in Minneapolis and people love the Midtown Greenway yeah, and there's a the Dinkytown Greenway and there's more greenways coming and I think there's a green way of governing uh, and everybody <laughs> should, should come and ride the greenway um, that's what I'd say and and then this these three things I think if you just own the values own who you are Talk about them proudly. Uh, that's what pulls us together as Greens, and I think that's what can pull us together as communities and a government. And use them, apply them all the time uh, when you're um, making policies, setting priorities, and addressing concerns. But also, I think, use them not just to, to figure out what to do, but how to do it the best way you can. And that's, I think, all I got. I just wanted to answer briefly. and. and um, it's, it's related to what uh, you said, and I think serving on boards and appointed boards is really important. Um, and it gives you experience and beefs up your resume and you can get to know certain people. But I think what's more important is to actually get known in the community. So figure out where you're going to run and try to get involved in that community, um, which I think you obviously did and probably a lot of us have, uh, did before we ever ran. Because if people know you and they say, oh, well, they've uh, been on my neighborhood group or they were active in that group, they accomplished something there, it gives you that kind of credibility uh, and that base. It also gives you an understanding, do you actually like those people and you can you work with them and can you be with them to solve problems? And if you can't, well then rethink this. But if you can and if it resonates with you and you say, yes, I want to, you know, I have a uh, connection uh, with these people and I want to represent and serve them in, in this other way, that's really important. But it also is strategically important because then you can start to form those alliances and they can even be small alliances with block clubs and church and businesses or maybe you were coached. And so you were the coach of those uh, you know, kids for those parents, and they know you, and okay, here's somebody who must care enough about things to get involved, and I know them. Um, if you're, uh, it, it's unusual that you can just show up and, and run, and sometimes you call the carpet bagger or something like that, but I think there must have been some other credibility and some stuff that you brought to it too. But I say that's a good, really a good secret strategy. I'll also say that um, in Minneapolis, there's groups that endorse candidates. Um, and there's like the Sierra Club endorsed me, Clean Water Action, so there's environmental groups, there's also a, there's a Take Action Minnesota and other groups, and then there's labor. So trying to get some of those alliances and allegiances um, is really important. Um, I also couldn't agree more that you, uh, the party affiliation of your voter you don't care about and you want and whatever party they think they're with or whatever, whoever they voted for for president, well you want them to vote for you, for the, what you're running for, and you're gonna do your best to represent them all. And that's something I had to say over and over again. People said, oh, Cam, you're just running to build the Green Party. You're just working on some movement out there. And it's like, no, I'm not. I, I wanna serve you, I wanna make a difference to our community and our life, and if I'm elected, I'm gonna work really hard to prove that I can represent you, even if you're gonna vote for the other candidate right now. Um, and I, there were a lot of divided households and that, and I just said that and I, over and over again. And I think it opened people's mind and it changed their minds, but I think that was key. So what do you do as a Green to try to hold together all the different factions and coalitions and activists out there in the community that um, are often uh, divided into their own groups, including um, so-called progressive uh, Democrats? Um, and uh, I think it's a, a great challenge, and it's, uh, I don't know that, that, that we can. I mean, that, that's my idea uh, for the Green Party when we started in Minnesota in 1994 was here's the electoral home for all of us. Come, it's safe and warm. Get involved. And we had some trouble. I mean, the parties had trouble. I mean, it's, it's growing a, in Minnesota and Minneapolis, and it hasn't. I, the biggest thing that I think that I can do is prove that you can be green um, from top to bottom, through and through, and you can win and you can get reelected, you can be successful in government, and that it works. Um, and I've done that, but still people who want to run are, are green in their heart in Minneapolis will say, ah, but I have to go with that other party because there's kind of a monopoly. And so it's very hard. So what we really need also is the next candidates to come and show it's an alternative party. And it actually, we, um, 
We did multi-party endorsement one year in 97 with the, the Democrat also endorsed as a Green. So counting that, we've had a Green on the City Council since 97. Not counting that, we've had a green, Greens on there since 2001. So we've been around and we're not really going away, right? We've had two and then we've had one for the last eight years, so it's not a lot. But we need to get more, and I think that would do a lot. But I think the other thing is having an open door policy, listening, um, and, and actually taking the ideas that they walk in with and come and say, here, I think you should um, have commercial recycling required throughout the city or start this program and, and say, okay, we'll take that and we'll fight, we'll fight for you and we'll work on that. And that helps, I think, keep them together and see that it makes sense. The Occupy movement's very interesting. Um, we're trying to connect th that, a lot of them right now with the uh, municipal utility movement and just try to get people to work together on common agendas. It's just a challenge and it's hard, but we have to keep doing it. But I think we need more Greens to run and win, hold that office, and then the other people realize there's alternatives to these other parties that are all over the map. Thank you. So, so I gotta say this because um, you might appreciate it, but one problem is once you become elected, you kind of become the man. And so a lot of the activists, a lot of times it's difficult and because you've crossed over to the dark side. And so it's really hard to kind of remain like open and active. And then also when you get somebody really mad at you because you didn't hold the ground, you didn't fight hard enough, you took the wrong vote, to kind of be slow and patient, explain yourself, you know, try to let them know you're still the same person you were before, and then also keep reaching back and going to the meeting and say, I still care about, you know, uh, police accountability or your foreclosure crisis or whatever the, the thing was. And probably we'll all screw up too and look more like the man than we wanted to on one decision we make or, do we for, you know, we vote with the majority and later we find out we got alienated these activists. So it's it's tough and we really could use a support group and we got to get together. <laughs>